one of the things that you mentioned is um, I forget where you mentioned it, but you're, you're bilingual. You mentioned that um, you're you're working. You're, you said in the Spanish community, uh, it's much more important to have that social proof. Um, and I agree. I, I think my we're both we both have experience in the solar Spanish in, or the solar industry in the Spanish communities, and it's definitely something that is a little bit newer to them. Um, how how else do you think Spanish is different than English? So when I first started in, in Austin, I was doing the inner communities of Austin. So um, bar, I want to say a bunch of my sales were English speaking homeowners and they were very fluent. If they were bilingual, they would prefer English. It wasn't a start until I started working in some of the outer markets where I started seeing a little bit more Hispanic driven communities. And what I found was I was having really, really great success with it because I could communicate. And I was kind of kind of asking myself, why am I having more success in the Spanish speaking communities than uh, an English dominant speaking market, which is like literally next door. We're talking about a difference of maybe five miles from Austin to this, this specific city. And I started asking my customers like, hey, have you guys ever looked into solar before? They're like, yes, we've been looking into it for years. But every time that we asked for a Spanish speaking representative, they never had that rep available. So the communication barrier was something that was very lacking in, our, in at least the Austin region for some time. Um, so I benefited from all of that. I was English speaking, I was Spanish speaking, so I could leverage that that communication piece. And, and it was simply built on trust. Um, what we hear a lot of, you know, about reviews, people don't typically write about good experiences. You're more likely to write about your bad experiences on reviews. Um, you could have in a phenomenal company, but every now and then you're going to have some angry person because they, they're more likely to write a bad review than a good review. So same thing with the, the Spanish community. They hear about the bad experiences so of course, when they find somebody that can't effectively communicate with them, they are, they have that wall built up. So when I was able to go in there and just say, Hey guys, I can communicate with you. I can answer these questions in Spanish. I can, you know, you can trust that I'm going to come back. And then you start slowly building that pipeline and then the installs start coming in. And now I'm that community solar guy. Oh, all these installs. Yeah. I did those for your neighbors and I did that for the community. And then that's where the referrals started coming in because I was that neighborhood solar guy for that Hispanic community. And that's what I really leverage. But I think for the Spanish community, it was number one, the social proof. Number two is that, that um, I could effectively communicate with them. Yeah. I, for, for all, all communities, I mean, all, it's not necessarily race specific, but one of the things that people seem, the reason that solar has kind of this uh, reputation that we're all always trying to overcome, which is every single person who's ever run a solar ad knows that they're going to get comments that say, oh, this isn't real. Solar is a scam. And, and the reason for that is not, like, you could have 100 installs and 95 of them could be perfect, but the five that weren't perfect and those people feel um misguided they're going to be the ones that are the loudest and that's kind of the reason that we have that reputation and it's not only in this industry it's in most industries just because the people that are um angry are more passionate and more vocal than the people that are completely satisfied um with the spanish community one of the things that i've seen is uh credit can be a challenge a, a lot of the time um do you have any specific questions that you ask to try to figure out their credit maybe if they don't know their score no. So one of the things I learned early on, and this is coming from my days in California, is I, I learned never to prejudge because I was knocking in those high end neighborhoods that multi million dollar homes. And the guy has a Ferrari in, in the in the driveway and he sells credit. And then I've also, you know, ran into, you know, a kid that he had, he had, a, he had to get a crappy loan to pay for that Ferrari. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, that's really funny. If it, right. So some, some people just don't build a credit. So like in his standpoint, he had a multimillion dollar home. He had the Ferrari, but he paid everything cash. So he didn't have credit history. And so it wasn't really, 
it wasn't really a fault to him. It's people that pay cash don't do that. Then I run into, you know, an 18 year old kid that has a torn up shirt and there's like, you know, greasy uh, stains on him because he's a mechanic. He has an 800 credit score. Right. So for me early on, I was that rep that prejudged, you know what, that, that looks like a crappy car in the driveway. I don't want to knock that house or, Ooh, they've got trash in their, in their, or they don't cut their grass. So that's not a good candidate. I just had to learn the hard way that don't prejudge. I just knock every home. I, my pre-qualification questions are always the same. Are you the homeowner on the title? Do you have the available roof space for this to make sense? Are you paying your taxes on time? And do you have a decent credit score? But more importantly, no major bankruptcies or large collections in the last seven years. If they answer yes to all of those, then I'm setting the appointment. Now I'm sitting down with them because at the end of the day, if they fail credit, what about their wife? What about their spouse? Or what about a co-signer? I'm never going to just leave that on the table. I've had multiple customers get a co-signer. I've had multiple, you know, hey, I don't have good credit, but my spouse does. Great. I'm not going to leave that on the table. So that's for me is, is something I had to learn early on because I do feel that I early on in my career, I let a lot of sales slip by because I just didn't sit with that customer. Yeah, I definitely uh, don't, don't prejudge. I, I guess my, my, what I was trying to allude to is we, one of the things we've been encountering is a lot of people that don't know their credit score. Like what specific questions do you ask? And you just talked about it, obviously making sure they don't have any um, bankruptcies or anything major in the last of history. Um, another one that uh, someone else has told us is like, Oh, make sure you ask them, make sure that they pay their, their bills on time. Make sure that they're like, are like you get a feel for, for that and the response that way. Um, because a lot of times people that don't, know their credit i mean it is a shot in the dark where you're kind of rolling dice a little bit but you have to ask certain questions to to get a feel for um, what might make sense but as long like you said those four questions as long as they check those boxes then uh it's worth your time to proceed um because even if a percentage of them anywhere even near like 50 percent of those work out that's still super profitable um for anybody Hey, you made it to the end of my clip. That's awesome. So um, thank you so much. I just want to let you know that I appreciate you. And if you're if you made it this far, if you actually made it to the end of this clip, I would also appreciate um, if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that notification button. Helps me to get my videos out there and give you more valuable content. Once again, I appreciate you watching this and I hope that you have an incredible day.